names um Reverend Mainangure. Jina lake ni Kasisi Mainangure. In the US they call me Peter Ngure. Hawataki kusema Mainangure. Pale Marekani wanamuita Peter Ngure. And the Lord has been so faithful to me. Na Mungu amemkuwa mwaminifu. And he's been a good God. Na amekuwa Mungu mwema. Uh, tonight, I mean, th- th- this morning. Asubu ya leo. Wajua kwa tu ni usiku. Eh. And I only came this week. Na alikuja juma hili. So I'm still in that time. Na yu basi yuko katika uwa wakati ule. I'm sure God will minister to us. Na hakika kwamba mungu wata tuhudumia. And the word the Lord has put in me. Na neno ambalo mungu wa meka ndani yangu. May be prophetic to someone. Leweza likao ni launabi kwa mtu. So I want you to open your heart. Na hivyo basi nataka ufungwe moyo wako. That you may receive. Ili upokee. Let's pray. Tuombe. Lord we come before you this morning. Bwana tuwaje mbele zako asubuhi ya leo. We pray that Lord you may speak to us. Tunaomba kwamba Bwana ukatunenee. Use me as a vessel God. Unitumie kama chombo Bwana. To glorify your name. Kutukuza jina lako. We ask of your presence Lord. Tunaomba uwepo wako Bwana. And we pray that none of us oh Lord. Na tunaomba kwamba hakuna hata mmoja. We we'll leave this place. Ataondoka mahali hapo. The hapa. same way we came in. Jinsi alivyokuja. But Lord. Lakini Bwana. You'll meet us this utakutana morning. Utakutana nasi asubuhi ya leo. Speak to us. Utunenee. For the glory of your name. Kwa utukufu wa jina lako. In Jesus name we pray. Katika jina la Yesu tumeomba. Amen. 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 Uh mtu akitoka maju When somebody comes from abroad, unaanza na stories za majuu. You start with the stories from abroad. You know there's something they call culture shock. Kuna jambo ambalo huitwa kustuka kwa kimila ama desturi. And culture shock can come in different ways. Na kusuliwa na mila ama desturi yaweza ikaja kwa njia tofauti. It can also affect pastors. Na vile vile yaweza ikaadhiri wachungaji. Culture shock is when things are things are, and not the way you expect. Kusuliwa na mila ni kumaanisha kwamba mambo yako jinsi unavyotarajia. I have a pastor friend of mine. Ni mchungaji rafiki yangu. From Congo. Ambaye ametoka Congo. And he he is uh, he is one of uh, one of the mainstream churches. Na yuko katika moja wapo makanisa makubwa. So they posted him to the US. Na hivyo basi akatumwa pale Marekani. And he was given a big parish. Na akapewa eneo kubwa sana. And so he comes from Congo. Na hivyo basi ametokea nchi ya Congo. Lands in the US. Akafika pale Marekani. Gets this big church. Akapewa kanisa lake kubwa. The church has some challenges. Na hiyo kanisa ilikuwa na changamoto. And so he does the way we do in Africa. Na hivyo basi akafanya vile huwa tunafanya hapa Afrika. He tells the members. Akaambia washirika. Let's set one day aside. Wacha tutenge siku moja. We fast. Tuwe tunafunga. And we pray. Na tuombe. One day. Siku moja. By the way, do you know Americans don't fast? Je, wajua kwamba Wamarekani wao wafungi? Unless they want to lose weight. Licha tu wao wanataka kupunguza uzani ama uzito. Not, I'm not giving an excuse for myself. <laughs> Sitoi sababu kwa sababu yangu. But he told them, lakini akawaambia, let us pray and fast for one day. Tuombe na tufunge kwa siku moja. We come to the church at 8. Tuje kanisani saa mbili. We pray until 6. Tuombe mpaka saa 12. And then we go home. Alafu tuende nyumbani. He has he had done that so many times in Congo. Alikuwa amefanya hilo mara nyingi sana And we do it here all the time. Na hapa pia huwa tunafanya kila wakati. So he set us that that say that I mean that day aside. Na hiyo basi akatenga hiyo siku. But after he had announced. Lakini baada ya kutangaza. Some members came to him. Baadhi ya washirika wakamjia. And they told him. Wakamwambia. Pastor. Mchungaji. That's why we hired you ndio sababu tulikuwa ajiri to pray for us ili utuombe we are not coming atuji that's a culture shock yeye alikuwa ni kusuko msuko wa kidesturi na mila so the pastor calls me na hivyo basi mchungaji akanipigia told me niko peke yangu and he told me i am alone think about it waza kuhusu jambo hilo over here pray and fasting we do it hapa kuomba na kufunga huwa tunafanya you, you go to a different church ukienda katika kanisa lingine tofauti they tell you we pay you to do that wanakuambia kwamba tulikulipa ili unafanya kazi hiyo that's what we call a culture shock 
Huo ndio msuko wa kidesturi na mila. So for the pastors here. Na hivyo basi kwa wachungaji wa chungaji mwako. When you call for a prayer day. Ikiwa utaitisha mkutano wa maombi. And five people come. Na watu watano oh, waje. Thank God. Umshukuru Mungu. <laughs> thank God for that. Umshukuru Mungu kwa hayo. Because there are places they will tell you as a pastor do kwa, it. Kwa sababu pana mahali watakwambia kama mchungaji fanya hiyo kazi. Uh, this morning we are going to share together. Asubuhi leo tutashiriki from the book of Joshua. Toka kitabu cha Joshua. Joshua chapter 3. Lango wa tatu. And I hope we'll have the uh, from verse 1 to verse 8. Kuanzia mstari wa kwanza mpaka wa 8. Joshua chapter 3. Joshua mlango wa tatu. From verse 1 to 8. Kuanzia mstari wa kwanza hadi wa 8. I will read together. Then Joshua rose early in the morning. He and all the children of Israel had lodged there before they crossed over. And they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it then you shall set out from the place and go after it yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2000 cubits of measure do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go for you have not passed this way before and Joshua said to the people sanctify yourself for tomorrow the lord will do wonders among you then Joshua spoke to the priest saying take up the ark of the covenant and cross over before the people so they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people and the lord said to Joshua this day i will begin to exalt you in the sight of all israel that they may know that as i was with moses so i will be with you and shall command the priest who bear the ark of the covenant saying when you have come to the edge of the water of jordan you shall stand in the jordan amen amen my message this morning to you ujumbe wangu kwako asubuhi ya leo is entitled umeanoani you have not passed this way haujapitia njia hii hapo awali you have not passed this way before haujapitia njia hii hapo awali you see joshua unajua kwamba yoshua and the israelites altogether wa israel were wandering in the uh, in the wilderness for about 40 years walikuwa wametembea kwenye nyika miaka 40 and they had come to this point that was unfamiliar to them na walikuwa wamefika mahali ambapo hawakuwa wanapajua and they weren't sure of na, the future na hawakuwa na uhakika kuhusu usoni think about it fikiria kuhusu jambo hili for 40 years they had been wondering miaka 40 walikuwa wanatembea i don't know what song they were singing sijui ni wimbo upi walikuwa naimba i don't know they were singing nimetembea sijui kama walikuwa naimba natembea sio pote but hapa kwa hapa because we're just going round the same place kwa sababu walikuwa na tu wanazunguka eneo moja but the time had come lakini wakati ulikuwa umefika and god spoke to them na bwana akawanenea and he said akawaambia you are about to make a journey mko tayari kufanya safari and the place you are going na mahali mnapoenda you have not been there Hamjai, before hamjaikuwa hapo hapo awali you have not passed there before hamjaipitia hapo awali it's a place you have not been ni mahali ambapo hujaikuwa it's a time you have not experienced ni wakati ambao hujaishuhudia and he says you have not passed there before na akawaambia kwamba hamjaipitia hapo awali just in case you think it's the place you have been for 40 years kama mnafikiria ni mahali ambapo mmekuwa miaka mingi telling them you are going to a, a new uh, towards a new journey basi alikuwa anawaambia mlikuwa mnaenda safari mpya a place you have never been before mahali ambapo hamjaikuwa hapo awali praise the lord amen 
the ancestors the the, 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 the ones who came from uh, from egypt their ancestors mababa zao ambao walikuwa wametoka misri they had crossed the red sea walikuwa wamepita bahari ya sham and now this is 40 years na ni miaka 40 but they were, they were they hadn't crossed over the jordan river lakini walikuwa wamevuka mto wa jordan the opportunity had been there nafasi ilikuwa imetokea but they had backed away lakini walikuwa wamerudi nyuma been unsure of themselves kwa sababu hawakuwa na uhakika and been unsure of god na kwa sababu pia hawakuwa wamemwamini mungu now there was a new generation basi palikuwa na kizazi kipya 40 years miaka 40 this is a new generation ilikuwa ni kizazi kipya they had the same chance lakini walikuwa na nafasi kama ile and they were willing to take that step na walikuwa wamehiari kuchukua hatua hiyo for 40 years Remember they had had the same diet. Walikuwa wamekula kile kile chakula. The Lord has had been with them. Mungu bado alikuwa nao. A pillar of cloud by day. Palikuwa na wingu mchana. A pillar of fire by night. Palikuwa na ngome ya ya moto usiku. They were doing the same routine. Na walikuwa wanafanya yale yale mambo. But then they arrived at a time and place. Lakini walifika mahali na muda. Where God says, ambapo Mungu alisema, it's time to change. Ni wakati wa kubadilisha. You've been eating this for 40 years. Mumekuwa mkila hivi miaka 40. You, you've been using this route for 40 years. Mumekuwa mkitumia njia hii miaka 40. You've been using this road for 40 years. Mumekuwa mkitumia njia hii miaka 40. But it's time to change. Lakini sasa ni wakati wa kubadilisha. Tell the person next to you it's time to change. Mwambie mtu ambaye umeketi naye kwamba ni wakati wa kubadilika. Okay turn to the person that you have been avoiding tell them it's time to change Mwangalie mtu mwingine mwambie ni wakati wa kubadilika It's time to take hold of what God ha- God had promised them Ni wakati wa kuchua na kutoa kile Mungu alikuwa amewaahidi and fulfill the purposes na he wate- had for them Na wakutekeleze matugu- ma- makusudi ambayo alikuwa nayo juu ya maisha yao It is time for you Ni wakati wako to take hold of Kut- what God has promised you kutoa kile Mungu amekuahidi and God is willing to fulfill na Mungu ana hiari kutekeleza the purposes he has for you makusudi ambayo yuko nayo juu ya maisha yako amen amen and as we read na tulivyosoma God described a few things that they were to encounter Mungu akaeleza mambo kadhaa ambayo wamekumbana nayo a few things they were to overcome mambo kadhaa ambayo walifao washinde He made it very he made it very plain for them. Na kayafanya maelezo hayo rahisi kabisa kwao. That there will be enemies. Kwamba pangekuwa na maadui. There will be obstacles. Watakuwa na vipingamizi along the way. Pale kwenye njia. But he also says, Lakini pia akawaambia, I will be with you. Nitakuwa pamoja nanyi. It won't be the same way. Amtakuwa vile vile. It's a path you have never used before. Ni njia ambayo hamjatumia hapo awali. There will be challenges. Utakuwa na changamoto. I will not forsake you. Lakini sitawaacheni. This is unfamiliar territory. Hapa mahali pa ageni. And the Lord just reminded them. Na Mungu akawakumbusha. You have not passed this way before. Hamjai pitia njia hii hapo awali. So there were three things that were mentioned. Hivyo basi pana mambo matatu ambayo yalitajwa. As we read, jinsi tulivyosoma, the first one were told, jambo la kwanza waliambiwa, keep your eyes on the ark. Mweke macho yenu kwenye sanduku la agano. One of the first things the Israelites were told, jambo la kwanza ambao wana wa Israeli waliambiwa, is to keep their eyes on the ark of the covenant. Walenge macho yao kwenye sanduku la agano. The ark of the covenant which they carried with them ambalo walikuwa nalibeba represented God's presence. Ilikuwa linawakilisha uwepo wa Bwana. You may recall waweza ukakumbuka that God had told Moses kwamba Mungu alikuwa amemwambia Musa to make the ark. Atengeneze hilo sanduku. Uh, it was an wooden ark. Liko limetengenezwa kwa mbao and it represented God's presence na liliwakilisha uwepo wa Bwana as it had the commands in them kwa sababu ilikuwa na zile amri ndani yake so they are told hivyo basi wakaambiwa to keep a distance wakae umbali these are they are about 2 to 3 million people ni watu milioni mbili hadi tatu hivi so the first reason maybe na hivyo basi sababu sababu ya kwanza 
to be told to keep a distance is that all of them may be able to see it. If they got too close to it, maybe those behind may not see the ark. So it has to be about a kilometer away. So that all of them cannot lose sight of it. The main point here of keeping that ark away is that they may not lose their perspective. So that they don't lose their perspective. So they keep looking at the ark of the covenant to remember the promises of God. But also Another reason maybe they were told to keep a distance away from the ark is that they may remember the admiration and the awe of God. That they may know that's the presence of God. Remember that God had appeared at Mount Sinai and he warned them about coming too close. The suggestion was that that God's presence cannot be treated too casually. If they went too close, they would, it would break them down. You know, it's about the fear of the Lord. So the first thing they were being told, though, though you are going to a place you have never been before, I want you to have the fear of the Lord na, in you. You see, today, we treat God in a very casual way. Very casual way. Sometimes I look at us when I come around, I look at the TVs. And there are so many channels today. And most of them, or some of them, it's about performance. Just performance. Brethren, there is a difference between performance and anointing. Performance never breaks the yoke of the enemy. Performance never breaks those chains. Performance never brings healing. Anointing does. Anointing does. I fellowship with a very small church. Sometimes we only 10 families. We don't have a YouTube channel. We are not even online. But we have seen miracles happen in that fellowship. We have seen members who had cancer healed in that fellowship. It's not about performance. It's about anointing. I've seen people come from Kenya. We have prophesied into their lives. And they have prospered in the US. Brethren, let's watch out. Let's not carry the word of God casually. He is a living God. And he is faithful. You are about to go to a path you have never been before. Amen. 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 Give that person a high five. So they walk. The Israelites get to the Jordan River. And they are told to wait for three days. The river is full. It is like El Nino that time. And for three days, they can see how the river is swelling. I guess they were seeing branches being dragged down. 
they saw the impossibility wakaona kwamba haikuwezekana and the, maybe the main reason for them to wait for three days at the bank of the river na pengine sababu ya kungoja siku tatu so they may see it is impossible ili waone kwamba haikuwezekana for them to have, to get the china construction kupata kampuni ya china mjengo to break for them a bridge kutaongezea badala for them to know this is impossible ili wajue kwamba haiwezekani only god can make it possible kwamba ni mungu tu angaliwezesha so they were there for three days because god wanted them to know kwa sababu mungu alitaka wajue that he is a promise keeper kwamba yeye ni mungu ambaye anaweka ahadi perhaps looking at the impossibilities in your life pengine ukiangalia mambo ambayo haiwezekani katika maisha yako maybe pengine god wants you to find hope mungu anataka upate tumaini and encouragement na uhuishwe in remembering katika kukumbuka that god is able kwamba mungu anaweza god is able mungu anaweza praise the lord amen sometimes you get to situations you never been before wakati mwingine unajikuta katika hali ambapo hujai kuwa before ah, Pers- personally mimi binafsi i used to work as a teacher nilikuwa ni mwalimu here hapa and i think i was a very good teacher na nafikiri nilikuwa mwalimu mzuri sana. Very good teacher. Mwalimu mzuri sana. If you are here you are my student. Kama uko hapa na wewe ni mwanafunzi wangu. Or a colleague. Ama mwalimu wenzangu. Or maybe you are my boss. Ama pengine ulikuwa ni mkubwa wangu. You don't have to raise your hand. Si lazima uinue mkono. It's okay. Ni sawa. They know I'm a good teacher. Wanajua kama alikuwa mwalimu mzuri. So I'd never been fired. Na hiyo basi sikuwahi kufutwa kazi. So I got to the US. Yo basi nikaenda Marekani and I'm fired. Nikafutwa. A path had never been before. Jia ambayo hakuwa amepitia hapo wali. A situation I never encountered in my Hali life. Hali ambayo hakuwa amekutana nayo katika maisha yake. You see I had been hired to work. Kumbuka alikuwa amepewa kazi uh, in a warehouse. Uh, katika uh, warehouse moja. And so we I was telling someone we used to have assignments Hivyo basi tulikuwa tunapewa majukumu. They are all digital. Yote yakiwa ya digitali. So you are given an assignment. Unapewa kazi through the computer. Kupitia tarakilishi. It gives it tells you, you do this work within 5 minutes. Ambayo inakuambia ufanye kazi hii kupitia muda wa dakika tano. And when you are done you come for another assignment. Na ukimaliza uje uchukue nyingine. Or you do this work. Ama ufanye kazi hii within 1 hour. Baada ya muda moja. Uh, when you are done come for another assignment. Kimaliza uje uchukue kazi nyingine. So we used to get those assignments through the computer. Na hivyo basi tulikuwa tunapewa hayo majukumu kupitia tarakilishi. So the computer was keeping track of how many assignments you are doing. Na hivyo basi ile tarakilishi ilikuwa inaweka rekodi ya zile kazi ambazo tulikuwa tunafanya. Also it was keeping how long it's taking you to do your job. Vile vile ilikuwa inaweka rekodi ya muda ambao ulichukua kukamilisha ile kazi. So we would work. Na hivyo basi tungefanya kazi. When we come the following morning, tukija asubuhi inaofuata, the list is up there. Orodha ingekuwa pale. All of the 60 of us. Watu 60 and then the percentage of your performance na aslimia ya utekelezaji wako so it would say uh, you'd see the first ones up there na hiyo basi ungeona watu wa kwanza pale juu they performed at 150% wakafanya aslimia 150 a majority of the people lakini wengi they were around 100% walikuwa aslimia 190 ah a few were 80 na wachache wakawa 80 And then when you look at the down of the list. Lakini ukiangalia pale chini ya orodha was my name. Pale kwa jina lake. I was working very hard. Alikuwa anafanya kazi kwa bidii sana. I was sweating very much. Alikuwa anatoa jasho. I was operating at 35%. Lakini alikuwa anatekeleza 35% pekee. So I was fired. Hivyo basi akafutwa. Had never been fired before. Hakuwa amefutwa hapo awali. It's a path I'd never passed before. Ni njia ambayo hakuwa amepitia. I didn't know what to do next. Hakujua la kufanya. This is my very first job in the US. Hii ilikuwa ni kazi yake ya kwanza pale Marekani. I thought I'd made the wrong choice. Alafu akafikiri kwamba alikuwa amefanya uamuzi usiyofaa. And I was fired in the morning. Na kafutwa asubuhi. We used to get to, to, to my place of work by 5:30 in the morning. Tunafika saa 11:30 asubuhi. We used to start work at 6. Alafu tunaanza kazi saa 12 asubuhi. I was I was fired at 6:10. Alifutwa saa 12 dakika 10. But after I was fired, lakini baada ya kufutwa, 
I remember the Americans have guts they speak. Akakumbuka kwamba Wamarekani huwa na ujasiri wa kuongea. So I told the manager, akamwambia mkurugenzi, I think you didn't train me very well. Nafikiri haukunifunza vizuri. And in the US, hapa Marekani, they are mandated to train you before they hire you. Wanafaa kukupitishia mafunzo kabla ya kukuajiri. And now I've said I'm not trained. I said I'm not trained. Ana akasema kwamba hakuwa amepewa mafunzo. So I couldn't be fired. Na hivyo basi hangefutwa. So he told me, akamwambia, we are going to train you again. Tutakufunza tena. So go home for three days. Nenda nyumbani kwa siku tatu. When the next hiring is coming in three days. Kundi hilo lingine linapoajiriwa baada ya siku trained, tatu. You be trained with them. Tutakufunza pamoja nao. So I came back. Hivyo basi akarudi nyumbani. Uh, this time ready to work harder. Akarudi kazini akiwa na ari zaidi ya kufanya kazi. I was kazi. trained. Akapewa mafunzo. So my percentage went higher. Na hivyo basi asilimia yake ikapanda juu. From 35%. Wa toka 35%. I got to 65%. Akafika 65%. Asilimia. That was very good. Hilo likuwa jambo nzuri sana. It's a path that never been before. Ni njia ambayo hakuwa amepitia hapo awali. And then let me and then uh, we were told that there's not so much work. Alafu wakaambiwa hakuna kazi nyingi. So you'll be working fewer days all of you. Hivyo mtakuwa mnafanya kazi siku chache So depending on your percentage. Kulingana na asilimia yako. You can work two days. Waweza ukafanya kazi siku mbili or three days a week. Ama siku tatu kwa juma. Or five week five days a week. Ama siku tano kwa juma. So at 65 Na hivyo basi katika asilimia 65 I was given two days. Akapewa siku mbili. A path I've never been before. Jia ambayo hakuwa amepitia tangu zamani. So I went home. Hivyo basi akarudi nyumbani. I told my wife I'll be working for two days. Akamwambia bibi yake kwamba atakuwa anafanya kazi siku mbili. And that, that's the time the economy of the US was down. Na hapo ni wakati ambapo uchumi wa Marekani ulikuwa chini. There were no jobs. Hakuwa na kazi. But My God is so faithful. Lakini Mungu wangu ni mwaminifu. So people began going to work. Na hivyo basi watu wakaanza kwenda kazini. And in any day, na siku yote ile, you'll find one or two people who call in. Ungepata watu wawili ambao walipiga simu. Yeah, they can't come to work because of one reason or another. Wakisema kwamba wangeweza kuja kwa sini, uh, kazini kwa sababu moja ama nyingine. So there's always a person who never shows up. Na hivyo basi kila siku palikuwa na mtu ambaye hangekuja. And so the managers because there were many. Na hivyo basi wakurugenzi sababu walikuwa ni wengi. They would always look at the uh, at the roster. Walikuwa naangalia ile orodha ya watenda kufanya kazi. And they always say. Na wangesema this guy works for two days. Huyu jamaa hufanya kazi siku mbili. So they would call me. Hivyo basi wangempigia simu. They would ask me, do you want to come and work? Na wangemuuliza, wewe I would say yes. Kazini wangesema ndiyo. In five minutes I would be there. Dakika tano nitakuwa hapo. And I'd work a whole day. Na angefanya kazi siku nzima. The following day, siku iliyofuatia, someone else would not show up. Mtu mwingine angekuja. A different manager. Mkurugenzi mwingine. And a different manager would be at work. Mkurugenzi mwingine angekuwa kazini. And he would look at the roster. Angeangalia ile orodha ya wafanyakazi. And he says this guy works for two days. Na asema kwamba huyu jamaa hufanya kazi siku mbili. him. Wacha tumpigie simu. They would call me again. Wangempigia simu tena. I ended up working six days a week. Akafanya kazi siku sita za juma. Because my God is faithful. Kwa sababu Mungu wangu ni mwaminifu. Those who had been there for 15 years. Wale ambao walikuwa pale miaka 10 na They were working for four and five days. Walikuwa wanafanya kazi siku 4 ama 5. This guy who performs as 65% Lakini huyu jamaa ambaye anafanya kazi was working for six days. Alikuwa anafanya kazi siku sita. Amen. 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 God is so faithful. Mungu ni mwaminifu. It does not matter what the computer says. Haijalishi tarakilishi na sema nini. He puts things upside down. Huwa anabadilisha mambo. In fact, I had never worked like that before. Kwa kweli hakuwa amefanya kazi jinsi hivyo. With only one day rest. Ni aliweza kupumzika siku moja pekee. Because he is a faithful God. Kwa sababu ni Mungu mwaminifu. I don't know what you are going through. Si unapitia nini. I don't know your situation. But he says you've not been this way before. Number two. They, are, they were told to sanctify themselves. Sanctify yourselves. To uh, sanctify it's not a word that we hear so often. But it means set apart. Remain holy. Be pure. Do sanctify yourself. 
Because God wanted to use them. They had to sanctify themselves so they are ready to receive what God would give them and handle what God would do in them. Remain holy. Be pure. Set yourself apart. My friends, if you find yourself in a place that is new, in a path you have never passed before, a situation you have never encountered before, a loss you have not seen before, however the situation might be, set yourself apart. Amen. Amen. Be pure. You see, I used to work for the media. So without him with the mic, I'm thinking, should I fix one up there? <laughs> so something new was about to happen. <laughs> and would change everything. <laughs> God was about to dry the river. The Israelites would have to cross over. Something that generation had never seen before. And I'm saying there are situations. Have you ever thought about the, when the Israelites went around the Jericho wall? What was happening to the Canaanites inside? You know they were, they were having their normal life. They were just happening, you know. Everything seemed secure. And then the wall came down and destroyed all of them. They were destroyed. So I'm saying things can happen. Things that seem so stable today. Seem things that were stable yesterday. Things can change. Moments can come in your life that you have never encountered before. Sanctify yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. How do we sanctify ourselves? Through prayer. Through scripture. Through worship. Conversations with other believers and listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying. You sanctify yourself through prayer, through scripture, through worship, and conversations with believers. Number three. Tatu. They had to act. Lazima wangechukua hatua. They had to act. Lazima wangechukua hatua. This is a path they have never been before. Hi ilikuwa ni njia ambayo hawakuwa wamepitia tangu zamani. And the priests are told, na wale wakuhani wakaambiwa, carry that ark. Mbebe hilo sanduku. Go to the banks of the river. Muende kwenye kingo za mto. Make sure you are carrying it. About a kilometer away. There are three million people looking at them. So they are all wondering, will a miracle happen? So think about the priests themselves. I guess they were anxious. What about if they step in? The river is overflowing. Mto umefurika. What about if you step in? Na je, tukikanyaga? And the water doesn't split. Na maji yakose kutengana. What about if we step in? Je, tukiingia? And we are drowned. Alafu tuzame? I'm sure they were anxious. Haikosi walikuwa na wasiwasi. It's a path they had never been before. Ni njia ambayo hawakuwa wamepitia hapo awali. And that's true to us too. 
na hivyo ndivyo ilivyo kwetu sisi as we take this path that is so new to us kwamba wakati tunapopitia hii njia ambayo ni geni sana kwetu you may feel anxiety in you waweza ukawa na wasiwasi there is something you've been wanting to do pana jambo ambalo ungekuwa umekutaraja kulifanya every time you think about it na kila wakati ukilifikiria you feel some anxiety in you unahisi wasiwasi you feel uncomfortable about it unahisi kwamba hauna amani na because you have never been here before kwa sababu haujakuwa hapo awali what about if god fails me lakini je itakuwaje Mungu akakwambia What about if nothing changes Ikiwa hakuna jambo litabadilika Friend Rafiki Act Chukua hatua Act Chukua hatua Even this church hata kanisa hii it's in a place it's never been before liko mahali ambapo alikuwa hapo zamani we are talking about and we are talking about multiple campuses tunaongea kuhusu mabewa mengi this is a path we've never been before hii ni njia ambayo hatujaipitia hapo awali and as a church sometimes we may feel this is too much na wakati mwingine unaweza ukahisi hili ni jambo kubwa sana but god is a promise keeper lakini mungu ni mungu ambaye anaweza not hali. leave us or forsake us hata tuacha even for you hata wewe act chukua hatua act chukua hatua it might be a financial situation inaweza kuwa ni hali ya kifedha and god is showing you the direction na mungu anakuonyesha njia do something chukua hatua i like sharing my own story natenda kushiriki hadithi yangu I'd thought of going to America a long time ago. Nilikuwa nimefikiri kuenda Marekani zamani. But between the day I got my passport. Lakini kati ya siku ambayo nilipata passport yangu. And the day I traveled. Na siku ambayo nilisafiri. Was over seven years and a half. Ilikuwa ni muda wa miaka saba nusu hivi. Act. Chukua hatua. Don't wait until that time for you to do it. Usingoje hadi wakati ule ili ulifanye. Act. Chukua hatua so that you know it's God who can do it. Ili ujue kwamba ni Mungu ambaye anaweza akalifanya. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tell that person I'm going to act. Mwambie huyu mtu nitachukua hatua. He's a faithful God. Ni Mungu mwaminifu. So the, the, the priest they put in their feet. Na hivyo basi makuhani wakaingia kwenye mto kwa miguu yao. In obedience. Kwa utiifu they make their feet wet wakayafanya magu yao yawe na unyevu wa maji they took that risk wakachukua hatua hiyo in obedience katika utiifu believe in god muamini mungu living behind the familiar and comfortable ukiacha yale ambayo unayozoea na yale ambayo ni ya utulivu and they were waiting to see god reveal himself na walikuwa na ngoja mungu ajidhihirishe the situation you are currently in hali ambayo unapitia sasa maybe overwhelming yaweza ikaonekana ni ngumu sana almost impossible to navigate jambo ambalo linaonekana kwamba ni ngumu haliwezekani almost impossible for you to make the next step linaonekana kwamba haiwezekani ukachukua hatua nyingine i know that feeling najua hali hiyo and maybe you are wondering what is ahead na pengine unashangaa nini kiko mbele i'm here to let you know niko hapa nikujulishe God has a new season Kwa in your life. Mungu ana majira mapya katika maisha yako. God is bringing a new season. Mungu analeta msimu mpya katika maisha yako. With new opportunities. Kukiwa na nafasi nyingine nyingi. It's a way you have not passed before. Ni njia ambayo haujapitia hapo awali. I believe we have exciting times ahead of us. Naamini kwamba pana nyakati za kusisimua mbele zetu. And it's time for us. Na ni wakati sasa. Not to be afraid. Wetu tusiogope. But to dip our feet. Lakini tuingize miguu yetu. Make our feet wet. Tuyafanye maguu yetu yawe na unyevu. See God. Na tumuone Mungu. Splitting that river. Akitenganisha mto. That you may walk on a dry ground. Ili uweze kutembea kwenye nchi kavu. He is a faithful God. Ni Mungu mwaminifu. Make your feet wet. Yafanya magu yako, yako yawe na unyevu. Take that first step. Chukua hatua hiyo ya kwanza. It's not going to be comfortable. Haitakuwa nzuri. You've been too comfortable for too long. Umekuwa umetulia kwa muda mrefu sana. You've been too familiar with the situations Umekua for too long. Umekuwa katika hali ambayo unaijua vizuri You've been doing the mrefu. same thing for too long. Umekuwa ukifanya yale yale mambo kwa muda mrefu. But God is saying, lakini Mungu anasema, I want a new journey in your life. Nataka safari mpya katika maisha yako. This way you have not been before. Jia hii haujapitia hapo awali. This way you have been here. Here yes. Hii umepitia. For 40 years you've been going round. Miaka 40 
For five years you've been going wrong. For two years you have been doing the same thing. But God is telling you the way I'm about to make for you you have not passed before. You've not passed before. He's saying it's time for you to take that one step of faith. Make your feet wet. Step into that water and see what God will do. He's done it in my life. He'll do it in your life. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's our father. He's our good, good father. He never fails us. He never forsakes us. He's a loving God. Take that step of faith. Maybe you came in here feeling so dry. He's a God who revives the bones. Maybe you came in here wondering whether you should make that decision. And you feel God is leading you there. Act. Take that act. Believe God that he is able. He can do what no man can do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is a loving king. And he cares about us. And maybe you came in here today Oh, someone told you to come to church today. And you are scared of the path that is ahead of you. I want all eyes bowed down. All eyes closed. Maybe you want to make the decision this morning. You've not been this way before. You've not given your life to Christ. You have never tried salvation. You are always feeling anxious about it. Maybe that's why I'm here for you this morning. I want you to come here. We pray with you. Make your feet wet. You can come. We pray with you. Or you can lift up your hand wherever you are. I would love to pray for you. We are waiting. He's a loving king. He's a loving. He loves you. He cares for you. Or maybe there is someone who wants to receive the Lord. Or, uh, maybe you can allow Jesus to stand up. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Just stand up. And maybe you you're here. You feel the Lord is leading you. In this, in this new way. A way you've not been before. You, you, you want us to join you in prayer. Maybe it's a financial breakthrough. You're... Maybe it's a relational issue. A situation you've not been before. And you, want, you are seeking prayers this morning. We would like to pray with you. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. I want to pray with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are there, you are trusting God. That he is leading you, and you feel he is leading you to a path you've never been before. You've 
You feel it's, it's your time Unahisi kwamba ni wakati wako and it's your place na ni mahali pako it's your turn ni nafasi yako zamu yako and your moment na nafasi wakati wako to receive the miracle pokea mujiza wako it's not about performance siku husu sarakasi it's about faith in god ni kuhusu imani katika bwana lord we Thank you so much. Bwana tunakushukuru sana. For those hands that are lifted up oh God. Kwa hii mikono ambayo imenuliwa Bwana. By faith. Kwa imani. They are saying yes Lord. Wanasema ndio Bwana. Give us the courage. Tupe ujasiri. Guide us oh God. Tuongoze Bwana. In this path we've never been before. Katika hii njia ambayo hatujaipitia hapo awali. Protect us O oh Lord. Utulinde Bwana. Lord I pray. Bwana naomba. That Lord as a church. Kwamba Bwana kama kanisa. You may remember us O oh God. Utukumbuke Bwana. And be fond of us O oh God. Na utunenea. And every hand that has been lifted up oh God I pray. Na kila mkono ambao umenuliwa Mungu naomba. That they will not go back the same way. Kwamba hawatarudi jinsi walivyokuwa. As they put their feet and make their feet wet. Wanapoyafanya magu yao yao na ukaunyevu. They will experience your supernatural power. Watakutana na nguvu zako za kiungo. Some of them are about to receive healing. Wengine wako tayari kupokea uponyevu. Some of them are chains have been broken. Wengine minyororo imevunjika. Some of them Lord they are getting new opportunities. Wengine wanapata nafasi mpya. Some of them will have exciting times of God. Wengine watakuwa na nafanya kati za kusisimua. Lord be found of them. Bwana waonekanie. In Jesus name we pray. Katika jina la Yesu tumeomba. God bless you. Amen.